even if you have absolutely no intention at all of buying this phone, keep watching this video because right now this is the most powerful phone you can buy with a small asterisk. This is the new iQ 11 and it's the first phone to launch, or at least for me to get my hands on, with the brand spanking new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip. That's the new flagship processor that Qualcomm showed off just a few weeks ago in Hawaii at their Snapdragon Summit. So quicker than you can say Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, iQ slapped the new chip in this new flagship phone. And if you haven't heard of iQ, which you may not have, they're actually a sub-brand of Vivo with a slightly more gaming and performance focus, but also available in different markets. But hold your horses before you jump to the next video. The reason I'm telling you about this is because it is the first phone that I can actually properly test with that new Gen 2 chip. So we can basically find out just how fast pretty much all 2023 Android flagship phones will be with this guy. Of course, there are some variables with materials and cooling and software and RAM, but the likes of the Galaxy S23, the Oppo X6 Pro, the OnePlus 11, Xiaomi 13, those sort of things, they're likely to all be powered by the same chip as well. But first, there is a lot more to this iQ11 than just the new chip, because we also get new and faster LPDDR5X RAM, and also much faster and also more efficient UFS4 storage. So new chip, faster RAM, faster storage, and also a brand new screen. This is actually really interesting. This is using the Samsung E6 AMOLED. And if you are into your tech specs, then you'll be familiar with the E5, which was in pretty much all Android phones in 2022. But now we have the new E6, which actually seems to be quite a big upgrade. If you take the previous gen, one of these, the iQ10, which came out just in July 2022, so only a few months ago, that was a full HD 120Hz screen. This is now Quad HD 144. And actually, as far as I know, this is the only phone to offer Quad HD and 144Hz refresh. It's also boosted the peak brightness from 15 up to 1800 nits. The dimming frequency or PWM is now 1440 Hz, so a little bit less eye strain. And possibly most exciting of all, it's an LTPO 3.0 display, which is the next gen of adaptive refresh rate, which can save more power and actually generate new frames, potentially making everything, including your games, look and feel even smoother. That's a pretty hefty upgrade. And as I say, what we're seeing here is what we're likely to see on pretty much all upcoming Android flagships. Elsewhere, we get a good sized 5,000 mAh battery with 120 watt fast charging. The stereo speakers sound great and it supports Snapdragon sound, which unlocks some tasty lossless and also low latency audio for gaming. No headphone jack or micro SD card slots, sadly, but it is a very smart, slim and light design and uh, actually has somewhat of a passing resemblance to the Vivo X80. There's definitely some uh, cross-pollinated DNA going on there. I mean, it is a sub-brand of Vivo, which itself is actually a sub-brand of BBK Electronics, which also own Oppo, which also own OnePlus. Anyway, I'm not complaining. It's still a lovely phone, really slim, uh, with a big 6.78 inch screen. However, I'm a bit disappointed because this black version is a bit dull. Okay, it's very dull. But what I would say, if you are thinking about buying this, is definitely get it in the other color, the one with the stripe, because it looks way cooler than that. Around the back, we have this triple camera system with a 50 megapixel main lens, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 12 megapixel telephoto, plus a 60 megapixel camera around the front. And overall, it is a solid setup, but the main GN5 sensor isn't particularly new, uh, nor are we getting any of that crazy one inch sensors that's coming to the new Vivo X90 Pro that's just been announced. And despite this new chip supporting crazy 4K 120 or 8K 60 video resolutions, this is still 4K 60 hey and 8K 30. This is the new iQ11. What do you think? It's not even coming to the UK, which is a shame. It's still a very capable camera, and iQ have made some nice improvements, particularly in reducing shutter lag, and so first impressions are pretty good. And finally, in terms of software, this ship's running Android 13 and iQ's Fun Touch OS on top, which is nice and fast, although there is a hefty amount of bloatware. And also, stop this, we only get two years of major Android updates. The fact that OnePlus has now jumped up to four years, matching Samsung, and Apple's also at the sort of top end of that. Two years of Android updates is just not good enough anymore, in my opinion. That's a bit disappointing. Okay, enough of all that, enough waffling. Let's get to the good bit. Let's find out just how fast this phone with the new 8 Gen 2 chip really is, and if it makes that much of a difference, if you really should care. Well, here are my Geekbench 5 and 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme stress test results. And for some context, let's bring in the Galaxy S22 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, 
and then also the Xiaomi 12T Pro with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. In single core, we're looking at about a 10% uptick over the 8 Plus Gen 1, and about 20% over the original 8 Gen 1, although it is more significant in multi-core with a 40% bump from the original and about a 12% bump from the 8 Plus. But let's switch over to 3D Mark, which tests the graphics with a 34% boost over the 8 Plus and a 62% boost over the 8. Although if we look at the stability, which is quite low and suggests despite the vapor chamber cooling system that we have in this IQ, there's potential for much higher frame rates, although not necessarily sustained over longer gaming sessions. What's really interesting though, is that in the same test, we only used 9% of the battery on the Gen 2 versus 12 and 13% respectively on the other chips. That's kind of what you want, right? Faster and it saves battery. Now I haven't had this long enough to do a full battery test and I am also really curious how this will stack up to other Gen 2 powered phones which we'll be seeing very soon because as I say there is a lot more to performance than just the chip inside. But I know what you're thinking, you said at the beginning Tom that this was the fastest phone ever. Well what about this guy, the uh, iPhone 14 Pro with the A16 chip? Well not in Geekbench, so clearly the processor is still significantly faster on the A16, but in 3D Mark, we're looking at a 12% higher score. And also if we jump down to FPS, a slightly more consistent frame rate on the 8 Gen 2. So that's the data, but what does it all mean? Well, essentially the 8 Gen 2 chip is very fast and actually a decent upgrade in terms of graphics performance, even over the 8 Plus Gen 1, which itself is still very capable, but less so in terms of the processor. Now the issue is diminishing returns, right? Where are you actually gonna see that kind of performance? Well, it is good to see that we have this new Quad HD 144. We do have an outlet for this extra performance, higher frame rates at high resolutions. Are there any games that support 144? Barely, a handful, but it is chicken or the egg. Developers won't optimize for better hardware until there is better hardware. I do think 144 makes a bit of a difference to just how fast the entire UI is, even over 120, obviously some diminishing returns, but I think you can notice it. And also combined with the LTPO3 panel, which adds new frames and can smooth everything out. It's a bit like an adaptive sync technology. This is incredibly fast and snappy. But also this is just the start. We haven't really seen any games taking advantage of hardware ray tracing, which these chips support. Also the new RAM and new storage that's gonna to have to be optimized over time. I appreciate that IQ have rushed this out and it is one of the first to come with the new chips and combined with the new screen, I think it has had a noticeable impact on performance, but I am also really excited to see what comes out over the next few months with the new flagship phones powered by the same chip and with the same display and what they can bring to the table. But what about you? What phone are you using right now? And also, are you thinking about upgrading to a new phone in the next few months? And if so, which one? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, a like and subscribe would be lovely. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.